This video series is brought to you by Dunleary Ratdown Libraries in association with Mark the Science Guy and supported by the Dormant Accounts Fund. The resources used throughout this series are part of the SFI Discover Primary Science and Maths programme and Azero Ireland. Hey everyone and welcome to the STEAM Lab. I've been on a building frenzy here and I've almost got it. I did run out of cards though so I had to ask Ali to go off and get some which Reminds me, she's been gone for quite a while. Let's get her back in. <laughs> hey, Ali. Hey, Mark. Ali, I've almost got this. I oh, just great. need those extra cards. There you go. Thank you. What is this? It's a birthday card. Birthday. Ali, I'm building a house of cards. Oh. Guess we'll have to bad. build something else. Well, at least we got lots of materials in here. Because everything in the world around us is made up of different kinds of materials. And these materials all have different properties. How strong they are, whether they're solids, liquids or gases, whether they let electricity pass through them or not. And they all have their uses. And we can use these properties to help build and do amazing things. So let's get building and start our investigation into materials. The substance used to make something is called a material. This desk, for example, is made from wood oh, and metal. And when an object is designed and being made, it's important to choose the best materials for the job. Materials have certain qualities or properties, like how strong they are, what color they are, how hard they are. And you gotta think about all those things carefully. Mm. I wouldn't like a paper desk, Mark. Me neither. Or a glass hammer. Nope. Or a cotton candy pencil. Ooh. Wait, actually. Pretty tasty. Understanding a material's properties is important when deciding whether the material is suitable or not. For example, glass is transparent, hard, smooth, can be moulded into different shapes. It's waterproof, but it breaks easily. It's used to make windows, containers, eyeglasses and many more objects. Plastic is another type of material. It's strong, waterproof, durable, and it can be used to make a lot of everyday objects, including bottles, toys, computer equipment. The problem is too much plastic can affect our land, water and food supplies. So you gotta put a lot of thought into the materials that you're gonna use, especially for the future. Definitely. Engineers are constantly being challenged to solve the world's problems. And engineers find a way to make things happen. So let's start our investigations and let's build a bridge. To build a bridge, you have to have the knowledge to plan, design and build it. So it's strong enough and so it'll last a long time. Bridges are everywhere and there's lots of different designs. You have beam bridges, truss bridges, arch bridges, suspension bridges. Some are even movable to allow tall ships to pass underneath. And they can stretch across valleys, water and roads. So when thinking about building a bridge, engineers have to pick the right materials for the job. But they also need to think about the right design and shape. The triangle is a strong shape and it's used to support structures. In fact, the triangle is the only shape that can't be deformed without changing the length of one of its sides. Because of this, it's an extremely popular building shape. Hmm, let's investigate that. Let's get some soft sweets or some marshmallows Ooh, yummy. and some cocktail sticks. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we are going to build a cube. All right. Okay, so building a cube, starting off with a square. Okay. Okay, so we'll get four sticks and four marshmallows. And we will join the four cocktail sticks together using the marshmallows at the corner. Just like this. Now we want this to be three dimensional so we're going to build up as well. Okay, so we'll stick some cocktail sticks in the top of those sweets or marshmallows like that. Pop some more marshmallows on the top. Oh, it's actually all white marshmallows. Oh yeah. Look at that. You're uh, neglecting the pink ones. Are they delicious? Delicious. So Building awesome. materials. <laughs> <laughs> and there we have our cube. Very cool. Okay. So once you've finished with your cube, you can move on to making a pyramid. So we've made a triangular based pyramid and we've also made a square based pyramid. Okay. Now let's press down on these shapes and see which shape is the strongest. Okay. Let's start with the cube. I'm pressing down on it and oh. 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 Can see it. That's not good. That's a lot of movement. Okay, that's not not so good. You don't want that for your brush. Right, let's see how the pyramid. Okay, goes. so we push down on here. Okay, oh, it's still good. a triangle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 
Yeah. Oh, much, much stronger. Pretty good, yeah. You can see when you push hard down on the cube, it folds in on itself, but the triangle doesn't. It's impossible to collapse a triangle without breaking one of its sides, which makes it the strongest straight edge shape. For this reason, you'll see triangles in lots of bridges. Okay, it's time for a challenge. Mm -hmm. Using the shapes we made, you have to see what the tallest structure you can make is. And if you want, you can limit the amount of cocktail sticks you can use, or you can even set a time limit. That is your mm. challenge. So triangles are really, really popular shapes when it comes to building bridges, but there is one shape that's even more popular. Yes. Arches. Let's investigate. The material a structure is made from is important, but you can strengthen a material by changing its shape. Bridge designers often use different shapes like triangles and arches. The curve of the arch spreads the load on the bridge and makes it stronger. Eggs are similar in shape to arches. The dome shape makes them very strong. And to demonstrate this, Mark, I've got another egg challenge. I know you do. Okay, what I want you to do is grab an egg. Okay, and I want you to hold the top and bottom. I always have eggs, just like an <laughs> arm's reach. Just... Always prepared. Yeah. I want you to hold the top and bottom of the egg between your thumb and your okay. forefinger and squeeze as hard as you can. This is a terrible idea. Do it! Okay, holding the egg between thumb oh and forefinger and squeeze. I've been working out, Ali. I don't know about you. So like. have I! Okay. <laughs> Come on, Pudge! <laughs> Ooh! Okay. okay, okay, that's tricky. What if I put. Still nothing? No, nothing. Oh, that is so much harder than I thought. <laughs> okay, you thought that one was mad. Yeah. Okay, this time what I want you to do is hold the egg in your hand and wrap all of your fingers around it. Are you crazy, woman? And squeeze. This is a terrible idea. Okay, you ready? Go. I'm going to have to get... <coughs> I'm afraid for you. <coughs> it won't go. All right. Okay, here we go. I'm a beast. <laughs> squeeze the egg. Okay, okay. <laughs> try that that is outrageous and that, they're not hard boiled eggs no they are no raw eggs, that is a raw, which i'll demonstrate now this <laughs> one's even got a bit of feather on yeah. it still that is so difficult the curved shape of the shell distributes pressure evenly over all of the shell rather than concentrating it at any one point the arch or the dome is one of the strongest designs do you think do you think they could take the weight of a human what are you getting at <laughs> oh, yes, I win! What do I win? <laughs> I gotta stand on the eggs. You gotta stand on the eggs. <laughs> okay, Ali, let's get cracking. Great yolk, Mark. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, let's distribute that weight evenly over the eggs and let's see how strong those eggs really are. Oh Check it out! Ah! <laughs> Success! I didn't want to try to take it. <laughs> at hand building a bridge we got a bit distracted by eggs there we always do yeah. our task is to design a bridge that's strong enough to keep us out of this shark infested water yeah. what you'll need for this bridge building investigation is some paper some coins or anything else you can mm -hmm. use as weight and some books or blocks to make your riverbank our task is to build a bridge that takes the most coins to keep us out of these shark infested waters okay let's get started okay okay so we'll build up the banks here. I will detail the results. Okay, so we're going to start off simple. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do single piece of paper. Okay. Flat bridge. Okay. Okay. Those sharks look pretty hungry, Ali. They do. Okay, let's see how many coins this okay. bridge can hold. The coins will represent people. People. One person. Oh. Doesn't that look too 
Two. Oh, oh good God. lord, no! Oh, the humanity! <laughs> okay. Look away now! Two coins. Okay, okay, bridge one took two coins. Okay, this time we're just going to double our materials. So same okay. design, double materials. So we're going to have two pieces of paper. Okay. Let's see if that makes a difference. Come on, save the humans. Okay. Think of the humans, Ali. One person. Okay. Two people. Oh. Three people. Oh, no! Three oh, people make shift. It's a massacre. Shares. Okay, I think we okay. gotta mix things up a little bit. Um, two, three coins. This time, let's make sure the people don't fall off the side. Always good. So we're gonna build some walls on our bridge. Okay, so cool. So we're just gonna fold up the sides hmm. and make a walled bridge. Okay, bridge number three. The walled bridge. The walled bridge. Okay, some nice little walls there. Just make sure your car doesn't go off the side. Okay. Okay, single piece of paper. Come on, Ali. Okay. One person. You won't get elected for mayor after this tragedy. <laughs> tragedy. <laughs> Two people. Three people. Okay. Four people. Five people. This is looking six good. Six people. Seven Those people. Sharks are getting tense, people, Ali. Nine people. Oh, oh. Oh. Ten people. Ali, there's a baby shark down there that looks very. Oh. People. Oh. Well, the, the sharks have a lot to eat now. It's bulking season. Eleven bulking people. season for the sharks. Eleven. Eleven. People. What an excellent increase, though. Okay. And all we did was just change up the shape a little bit. Okay. Let's let's look at arches this time, because we did Absolutely. look at arches earlier. Yes. So we're going to have two pieces of paper. First piece is going to form an arch. Okay. So we'll tuck that down in there like that. And then a second piece of paper across the top. Okay. Okay. Let's see how we go. Bridge number four, the arch. One person. Okay. Two people. This is good. Three people. Well, sharks, they, four they're, people. I think they're full, but. Uh, Five people. They have had a lot. They have had a lot Six to eat. Six people. Seven people. Eight people. This looks good. Nine people. How strong the arch Ten is. Ten people. Eleven people. Okay. Twelve <laughs> people. 13 oh, people! Okay. 13 people! Okay, the best so far, the arch bridge. Mm, makes mm, sense, we did mm. investigate those yes. eggs earlier on. Okay, this time let's make a corrugated okay. bridge. So what you're going to do with this one is have a flat piece of paper, grab another piece of paper, and we're going to accordion fold it. Okay. So we're going to make some uh, triangles, because we did learn before the triangles are, some, mm -hmm. are pretty strong shapes too. So investigate different shapes yourself, and then note and detail your results to see which bridge was your strongest bridge? That one's popping that way. Okay, okay. and let's see how okay. many people our corrugated bridge can hold. This is for your election for mayor. Okay. One person, two people, three people, four people, <laughs> five people. Just, okay. Six people, speed round. Seven people. Oh, oh. it's a gathering of Eight vast people, proportions. Nine people, ten people, eleven people, twelve people, thirteen people. 14 people, 15, 16, I can't keep track, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, Get comfortable, people. 25, This is not a game of bingo. 27, 28, oh. 28, <laughs> it's fine. 29, 30, there are 30 people on this bridge. Wow. 31, 32, 33, 34, bridge. 35, 36, 37, 38. Do you want to come back later? You're going to have to go to the bank, Ali, to get more coins. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. I think I've got to make some calls. I won't be home for dinner. 49, 50, 51, 52. Give me some people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's, let's uh, load this bridge up. How many? What are we on? 52. That was a lot of weight, this all by just changing people. the shape. Really cool. Yeah. Remember to design your own bridges, use different shapes, and see how many coins they take to keep you out of the shark infested mm. waters. So an engineer may select the materials and the design that they think are best suited to the bridge to get it to work. But the bridge is going to be there for a very, very long time, yep. and it's probably going to be exposed to lots of different kinds of weather conditions. So when engineers choose a material, they'll have to think about how it will change over time. So let's explore some changes that materials might go through. Some materials can be changed. They can be mixed with other materials, for example, when all the ingredients are mixed together to make a cake.
No cake? I left it at home, sorry. Uh. Material changes can happen in nature or they can be caused by people. A material may undergo a physical or a chemical change when it's heated or cooled and they may also happen when materials are mixed together or separated from one another. I have a great idea for mixing different materials together to uh, change the ambiance in here a little bit now. Change the ambiance with a funky retro lava lamp. Mm -hmm. What you'll need is a, a plastic water bottle, some oil, some water, some food colouring and some fizzy tablets. Okay cool, let's bring back the 70s or the 80s or the 90s. They never go out of style. They never go out of style. Okay, the first thing we gotta do, get our bottle, fill it with about a quarter full of water. Oh. Okay. Once you have your water in your bottle, then you're gonna pour in your oil. And I want you to look very closely at what happens to the oil Ooh. and water mixture. Bubbly. Fill it all the way up, almost to the top. You'll notice that the oil and water do not mix. The oil is lighter than the water, so it sits on top of it. The next thing you're gonna to need to do to add the extra funk is to get some food coloring. What color? We've got lots of colors. What color would you like? Um, I'm gonna start off with a red, please. It's sunset red or super red? Ooh, multiple choices. Mm. Give me a super red. Super red, okay, yes. super red for you. And I'm gonna go oh, with constant, uh, please, Carol. royal blue. Okay, okay, mm. awesome. Now, what you're gonna do is drop your food coloring into your bottle. And you'll Ooh. notice <laughs> that Sinky. they sink all the way down to the bottom. The food coloring doesn't mix with the oil. It sinks down to the bottom of the bottle and it will mix in with the water. Our lava lamps will be powered by chemical energy. That's the energy that's released during a chemical reaction. And to start that chemical reaction for us, we've got some fizzy tablets. Fizzy tablets, fizzy vitamin C tablets. Okay. So what you're gonna do is grab some of the tablets, break them up into little chunks. Chunks. Little chunks. And then you're going to drop one of the tablets down into your bottle. It's gonna pass straight through the oil. And when it hits the water, it's gonna start dissolving in the water. And it chemically reacts, releasing a carbon dioxide gas. Mm. That gas is light. It travels up through the bottle and escapes out the top. But when it's traveling up, it brings some of the food coloring globs with it. Mm, Brings it up, gas escapes, food coloring sinks down to the bottom, lava lamp action. Okay. Okay, ready to kickstart our lava lamps? Ready. Okay, let's get a disco going in here. Okay, dropping it down, all the way down, starts reacting with the water. Oh. You can see the bubbles, that's that carbon dioxide gas getting released from the chemical reaction. Oh, I can see some of the blue. Oh nice, yours right are starting to kick off. If the movement dies down, just add in more fizzy vitamin C tablet. That will dissolve, giving you more carbon dioxide gas to kickstart your lava lamp again. Oh, that's great. Oh, cool. I'm gonna add in some extra colors. Ali, give us a blue. Oh, a blue, okay, yeah. I have a blue. I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna add red to mine. Oh, nice, oh, then okay. they'll look the same. Let's get uh, a few little drops. Can I put some blue. orange in, actually? Oh, look at that blob. Blob, blob, blob. Blob, blob, blob. blob, blob. Oh, cool, check it out. Oh, Ooh, they're close. Look at that explosion of color. Oh, nice. When different materials are mixed together, sometimes we can separate them out again. Inks and dyes are made from different chemicals. To make all the different colors, lots of different colored chemicals are mixed together. Let's investigate that. For this, what you'll need is some filter paper, a jar or a beaker, some water, some washable markers, different colors, and a scissors. First thing you're gonna wanna do is Cut your filter paper so you get a strip that's just about long enough that'll stand inside your jar. So you should have a strip of filter paper that looks a little something like that. Washable markers will work for this, permanent markers and stuff will. Blob of black down about five centimeters from the bottom and I'm going to put some green down there too. Uh, next. What you gotta do is put a small amount of water into your jar or your beaker. You wanna make sure that those blobs of ink don't sit in the water directly. The water's gonna gradually move up through the filter paper. Pop your filter paper into the water, and then you wait. Then we wait. Mm. So what you'll start to see is that the colors in the ink will separate out. So once you're happy with it, take it out of the paper, hang it to dry, and you should get something that looks a little bit like this. Cool, and you can see all the colors spreading out. Yeah. 
So we can see that the black ink is actually made up of loads of different colors. There's some some blue, some yellow. Yeah, you can see all the colors Some there. red, some pinks in there. Mm. And the green, as we all know, blue and yellow makes mm. green. And we can actually see that here. We can see some blue down here in the middle and some yellow on the outside. That's all from us here today at the Steam Lab. Remember, you can try out all these hands-on investigations on the SFI Discover Primary Science and Maths website, primaryscience.ie. We're about to raise the funk in here. See you next time. Bye. This video series is brought to you by Dunleary Ratdown Libraries in association with Mark the Science Guy and supported by the Dormant Accounts Fund. The resources used throughout this series are part of the SFI Discover Primary Science and Maths Programme and Azero Ireland.